There we go. Hey, man. Hallelujah. Glad to see you all today. Uh, we have repositioned the lights from uh, last week. So hopefully it works a, a little bit better. Hey, Amen. So uh, got a little bit more work done this past week. And uh, part of me was a little disappointed that it was, you know, like, 50 degrees out when I came outside. I was kind of hoping for it to be a little lower because I was really wanting to test out the uh, uh, the heating here in the room. But uh, uh, nevertheless, I, I, at the same time, I can't be complaining because I'm not freezing. So, uh, but no, we're we're doing our best to, uh, to make the solid progress here, and because uh, we we are definitely looking forward to continuing the uh, Garage Baptist here uh, services throughout the course of the year. Not not just uh, when it's nice out, but year round. Amen. Uh, so, with all that being said, let's go ahead and open up here in a word of prayer. Our most gracious Father in heaven, we do thank you, Lord, for being so good to us, for loving us and saving us. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to gather here in, uh, with uh, the Garage Baptist. And we do pray, Lord, that everyone that tunes in, whether it be live or, or later on down the road, will get exactly what it is that they need out of the service. I pray, Father, that you please forgive me of my sins and help me, Lord, please, to, to walk closer to you. And we pray, Lord, for all those who are battling this uh, this COVID. Um, <laughs> it's nasty out there. And, uh, well, you know everything that's going on with it, Father, and we're asking you, please, for your help with it. Uh, they're wanting to shut our nation down yet again. And... Uh, while we do admit that, that we definitely need to get back to you, that the, uh, the old ways weren't working, uh, we certainly don't want to see our economy destroyed because of this virus, but we're trusting you, Father, please, to take care of it according to your holy will. We do thank you, God, for loving us and saving us, and do pray, Lord, for your blessings upon this day. Help us, Father, please, be obedient to you. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. All right, so with all that in mind, how about we start off this morning with this wonderful song by uh, uh, Franny Crosby called Blessed Assurance. <clears throat> Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit and washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness and lost in His love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. 
Amen, amen. I hope he's your savior too today. Got to loosen up my cup holder down there some. All right. How about now we sing how great thou art? <clears throat> I was asked a year or two ago what my favorite hymn was. And at the time, I just, you know, how do you pick out a favorite hymn? And uh, got to thinking about it. And I remembered a few years back uh, going over to uh, uh, the Dorchester nursing home there with uh, Brother Russell Lee. And as we were sitting there waiting for the service to begin, there were these two older ladies. And uh, one of them asked the other, what's your favorite hymn? And uh, she replied with hers. And then uh, the first lady says, oh, that's a great hymn. This is my favorite hymn. And then they just started going back and forth about, you know, oh, I love this hymn and I love this hymn. And it was just so encouraging. And uh, I'd have to say if I had a leaning toward a very specific uh, favorite hymn, it would have to be How Great Thou Art. Uh, yeah, it's not a fast one. We all know I love the fast ones. But I just love the, this whole idea of thinking about how great God is. Amen? So, uh, How Great Thou Art. Let me get a little bit more water there, because I do like to get into it. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout. The universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God is Son, not sparing, Send him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, 
my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Amen, amen. I was thinking there as we uh, were singing, uh, you know, if y'all want to, I would encourage you to, to think about, you know, what your favorite hymn song is. And uh, how about typing in the comments there below, we can... Uh, See what everybody has a bit of a hankering for, amen. And uh, and of course, if you would please, you know, make sure to click the like and uh, especially the share button there, so that we can uh, get the word out here about the these meetings. I understand people are not going to be able to listen to them at 5 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time, but that is okay. Uh, they can tune in a little bit later on. And uh, the more we get the word out, the more God's word is going to get out there. Amen. So with all of that being said, I'd like to take your Bibles, if you would, please, and run with us over to the book of John, chapter number 15. Amen. Excuse me. And uh, felt led to continue here on uh, our Windmill Faith series, even though we're picking it up a couple of excuse me, a couple of years later, got the, the hiccups right now, and, uh, but uh, we are looking forward to seeing what the good Lord's got for us, amen, got a little bit of a studying in there this morning, and, and looking up some uh, different stuff on uh, the websites and whatnot about windmills, and I gotta tell you, got me excited, I'm looking forward to uh, what the Lord's got here today and, and looking to, to see if maybe we get to continue it again next week. That would be wonderful. Uh, and other possibilities. Amen. Uh, so, all that being said, I trust I've stalled enough by now. You have found your place there in John chapter number 15, and that's very important because I am not a palm reader. Amen. So, John 15, and we will read the first seven verses. Jesus says here, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. Uh, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you correctly read this is john chapter 15 verses 1 down through verse 7 and again we are looking at the, this uh subject of windmill faith this would be part number five and if you want a a subtitle for it uh, we would subtitle it why the windmill stops why the windmill stops our most gracious Father in heaven, we do thank you, Lord, once again for being so good to us, for loving us and saving us. We thank you, Lord, for uh, uh, the ideas here about the, the Garage Baptist that you've been uh, sharing with me here even this morning about how to continue to improve. And uh, we're certainly looking forward to being able to do that so we can continue to serve you here uh, in, in this uh, mode that you've established for us at this time. We do pray, Lord, for each and every one who is tuning in, whether it's live or, or be listening in later on, for your blessings upon them and help them, Father, please, to take in all that you've got for them. And help me, Lord, please, to present this sermon the way that you'd have me to, that it would be a help to your people and a light to the lost. Pray, Lord, if there's anyone here in the sound of my voice who does not know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, that they would make today that glorious day that they ask Jesus to save them because they acknowledge that they are sinners who are bound for hell, deserve hell, but they need a Savior. And there's only one Savior, and that's Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Thank you, God, for loving us, for saving us. And we'll talk to you a little later. And we ask you, Father, also, please, though, for all those who are battling the COVID and the other issues, uh, 
uh, Wesley Poston and, and Henry Allen come to mind here real quick and we do pray Lord uh, for your helps with them and, and all the other issues and we do pray Lord for uh, Abby and Cody as they are, got married yesterday and uh, beginning their new life together for your blessings upon them help us Father please we love you Lord in Jesus name we do pray Amen and Amen a little bit more of my water there and uh So you may be thinking, how in the world are we getting anything to do with windmills uh, by looking at a portion of scripture here where we are dealing with a vine and the branches that come out of the vine and, and the, the fruit that comes and is produced off of those branches there. And, and well, it, in my mind anyways, we all know I'm a little bit crazy, but that's all right. You know, uh, in my mind, I'm looking at this and I see the ability to produce fruit as being comparable to being able to produce energy. Now, Jesus says here that he is the vine. He, he's the one who is giving us the energy we need so that we can turn around and produce the fruit. And again, as we have stated many times before, in fact, well, let me turn back over there to John chapter number 3 real quickly here and uh, read verse number 8 for you. In John chapter 3 and verse number 8, Jesus talking to Nicodemus here. He says, The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou bear and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. And that's a capital S. Uh, in other words, the wind is a type of the Spirit. Uh, without the wind, the windmill just sits there, your arms outstretched, hey, I'm here. But as the wind turns, as it blows, I should say, the, the rotors, the blades begin to turn. And they begin to spin. And so the next thing we know, uh, it's able to produce energy in some form or another. Now, before we you know, had our modern electric system here, uh, it would be used to turn a pump. And the pump could pump water up out of the ground or oil up out of the ground, whatever was needed there. Uh, it could be used to uh, to turn the gears to uh, run a sawmill, so on and so forth there. And now they primarily used to generate electricity. Uh, the whole idea, though, is that the wind is using the, the, uh, the, wind, the windmill. I'll get it out in a moment here. Uh, and is using it to produce energy. The windmill is using the wind to produce energy. It, 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 you know, they work together. And obviously, someone who owns a a, uh, a vineyard, they, they've got to go out there. They got to take care of the, the the vines and all the branches coming off of the vines if they want to produce grapes. It, 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 they work together. And so we're looking here at this idea of, okay, so long as the, the vine, the branches are connected to the vine, the branches are therefore producing fruit, everything's good in the hood. The windmill, so long as it is turning, is producing energy, it is producing the electricity that is needed, and everything's good in the hood. But what happens... When the windmill does not turn, as we've already said, if it's not turning, it's not producing energy. Nothing is being accomplished. So if it's not, nothing's being accomplished, what is the point? Why is it there if it's not going to do nothing? Well, if it's not going to do nothing, something needs to get done to fix it. Amen. The basic principle there. So if that's the case, then we need to understand why would it be that the windmill would not turn. Now, bear in mind, please, the wind is a type of the Spirit. Christians, we are God's windmill. Churches, the local assembly, is simply bigger windmills when it comes down to it the evangelist out on the road windmills the missionaries windmills pacific garden mission places that are, are not only trying to be help to the physical need but to the spiritual need as well windmills for the lord 
But what happens that causes them to not work? Causes those rotors to stop spinning? I believe we've got a few things here that we can point out real quickly this morning that would cause the windmill to stop working. And, and I'm going to try it with, to go in, in the worst possible way down to the, the good reason for it to stop working. Number one, I want you to realize there could be something called catastrophic failure. I watched a few uh, videos as I was studying for this. Uh, look, I, I wanted to know if any windmills have ever flown apart. And, and yeah, the, it, it does not happen very often. Okay. Uh, but it can happen. And you, and you <clears throat> excuse me, you, you know, all of a sudden you'll be watching it and it's just sitting there spinning and all of a sudden pieces flying off all over. One of the blades has cut the the stand in two and it's just toppling over, falling over. This is what's called catastrophic failure. It has been destroyed. And sometimes such catastrophic failure can occur because of internal problems. Bearings begin to go out. The, the braking system fails. Yeah, they, the windmills have brakes on them, by the way, just like your car does. And it, it, it just ends up spinning itself to death. Next thing you know, the, the rotor's flying off, blades are flying all over the place. Damage is irreversible. Now, sometimes there's parts that are salvageable. Hey, that, that's great. <laughs> I, I like recycling. I'm glad that God loves recycling. Because no matter how bad I get, He can still fix me up and use me still. Amen. But catastrophic failure, though, tends to be something of an internal problem. It just... The blades started wa waving back and forth too much instead of being straight up and down. They start going in and out until they finally make contact with something they're not supposed to. That, that's a, a failure there. And when we can see people, you know, as individuals can have mental breakdowns. We can see individuals who, who the cares of this life just beat the snot out of them till they can't stand it anymore. And they walk away. They give in to, to, to lusts and temptations that, that ruled them before they got saved. And they've gotten saved. They've, they've walked right with God. But this life just won't let them alone. And what happens next thing you know? They're back to it and they're gone. It can be issues of unresolved sin. Sin that, that is just occurring and we refuse to deal with it. Oh, we ask for forgiveness. Okay, great. But we're not sitting here actually trying to avoid going back to that sin. I know, we're getting back on that, that series that we preached a couple of months ago. Hey, avoid sin. Get, go, go do that, uh, that sermon there on Sermon Audio. Deal with the unresolved sin to avoid catastrophic failure. Sometimes you, do, you just have a division, a split that occurs. Maybe it's one in your family there... Uh, Bible tells us not to be unequally yoked. The, the person who's saved and the person who's not saved, and you just find there, there's too much friction, and, and next thing you know, the marriage falls apart. People in church, want, you know, some have an idea to go one direction, some have an idea to go in another direction, and next thing you know, the church splits. It's catastrophic failure, church. It, we're not being productive anymore because we stopped working together for God. Because the families stopped working together for God. Because the individual stopped working for God and started working for self. But that's the internal side. The, the, the external side. Corrosion. It's unsightly. But it's also cancerous. Like rust on your car, it's unsightly. And you can deal with it for a little while, but after a while, if you don't do something about it, the next thing you know, you've got a hole, you know, a nice big hole there on the bottom of your door. 
Your, your fender is about to fall apart because of all the rust. Your exhaust system fell off because of rust. It was external, but it burrowed inside. We think about our own personal lives there. We, we have bills that aren't getting paid. What is that doing? It is causing pressure on us. Uh, job performance it is not up to snuff. We're, we're, our minds are, are any place other than where we're supposed to be. We got car issues taking place there. And, and that's all we can sit here and, and think about. Our health begins to deteriorate. What about our families? Are, are we ignoring our families? These are all corroding issues. Churches. Yeah, there, there's the building issues. You know, you got maintenance on them. You got to fix things up and whatnot. But what about the fellowship? Oh, we're good. We're good. We're going to head on out now. Well, hey, that, that's great and all, but have you had any fellowship with your fellow Christians? Or is it simply it's me and my family and then we're going to go home? Oh, hey, we've we done what we did. We, we showed up for church. I, I got other things I can do. I, I, I gots to go. Well, that's fine occasionally, but how about occasionally we also... Sit around and fellowship with one another. Not gossip. Not gossip. No, no. Fellowship with one another. How about getting on, on these cell phones? I can't use mine because obviously I'm recording right now. Uh, but we get on our cell phones and when we just call our brothers and sisters who we haven't talked to in a while. Call one or two a week. Someone comes to our mind, but instead of us acting upon it and, and calling them up and encouraging them, just talking to them. It, you're going to find a lot of times it's encouragement. We just sit back and say, hmm, not right now, Lord. It's corrosion. It stops the windmill from turning. I found that during the course of my study that there's this idea of what is known as curtailment. Those breaks I mentioned earlier get applied. Now, what curtailment means is deliberately reducing the amount of power being generated. Now, windmills, obviously, uh, they're designed to produce power. They're designed to be turning. It's one thing if nature stops the wind from blowing. It's something else entirely different when the windmill stops turning itself. Now, it could be stopped turning because, you know, the wind's too powerful. But what if it's a matter of us? Don't forget, we are the windmills here. It's a matter of us not being comfortable with the direction God is taking us. That, that's a matter of the windmill saying, hey, wait a minute, the winds are too powerful for me. What if it's a matter of, you know what, I, I really would rather go and indulge in this sin instead of being true to God. That's us choosing sin over God. That's us deliberately stopping. That's us curtailing our own ability to serve God. Whenever there's curtailing taking place, church, it costs the owner of that windmill. Those windmills are, 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 all the expense of the windmill is brought in in advance. In order, to, everything has to be built first. And so it's a matter of that they've got to get the energy out in order to repay the money that's been sunk in there. And it's still got to get even more money out in order to turn a profit. And so when that windmill is deliberately stopped, money's not coming in. Investment is being wasted. Profits are shrinking. The Bible tells us that we have been bought with a price. That we are not our own. We are bond slaves. We, we are owned and indebted to our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so when we choose to ignore Him, 
for our own selfish reasons. And anytime it involves us choosing sin over God, it's our own selfish reasons. It's rebellion. We are costing him. Now, granted, he paid everything there on the cross of Calvary for whosoever will. In the subject. And he's certainly not going to get hung back up on that cross. He's certainly not going to die again. But how much humiliation does it cost him when we sin? As you know, Satan rubs that into his face. Aha! Uh -huh, look what Dennis is doing. His spirit, his precious Holy Spirit, lives inside of us, church. If you have been blood bought, born again by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, according to Ephesians chapter number 1, verse 13 and 14, you have been sealed and dwelled with the Holy Spirit of God. So every sin you commit, He's there along for the ride. Everything you look at, you've got no business looking at, He has to see that as well. Those jokes, oh, I'm not telling them, you're listening in, He's got to hear it. That foul language that you're spewing forth from your mouth, you're basically making him say it as well. That costs him. And when we're more obsessed with ourselves than we are with God, we are curtailing him. And when we're busy curtailing God, what happens? The windmill has stopped turning, but the wind's still blowing. Something I've noticed, you know, every time I've uh, released a balloon accidentally, because I don't do it intentionally, bad for the environment and all that, uh, especially animals, that's you know, primarily what I'm talking about for the environment, uh, but whenever I've let go of a, a, wind, of a balloon, I'm sorry, or blown bubbles, my daughter loves bubbles, so I, I've Blown a couple of bubbles for her uh, with the bubble wand and all that. Uh, I noticed that it just floats away. The wind doesn't just stay right there. Oh, Dennis, you, you accidentally let go of the balloon. Here, I'll hold the balloon steady for you so you can grab it again. Oh, you, you blew the blue, the bubbles at your, your little girl there, and she wants to pop them. Uh, I'll just go ahead and stop so that the bubbles stay right there so she can pop them. No, they blow away. It becomes a missed opportunity, church. That wind that, that, that is blowing by the windmill that has stopped intentionally is not going to circle back around. Oh, I see you stopped. Let me come back around again and again and again until you finally start turning. It's gone. Poof, gone. It's not going to sit and wait for us to decide to work. Are we deciding that we want to work or are we already working or are we just sitting back saying, not so, Lord? Don't forget, Peter tried that one and God put him in this place over it. Now, fourthly, there, there's the, the catastrophic failure, the corrosion, the curtailment. Fourthly is the coordinated removal. Now this is where we start to get a little bit of a, a mixed bag, whether it's bad or it's good. Uh, the coordinated removal is when the owner chooses to remove said windmill. How in the world can that possibly be good? I'm so glad you asked. I love those good questions. Uh, number one, it could be a matter of the rapture took place. Now, obviously, I'm still here, so the rapture has not taken place yet, but one day it's going to, and then all of us who are alive and remain are going to be called up into heaven there, and we're going to meet those who were dead, and their bodies are going to be raptured up out of here. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's going to be a coordinated removal, and we're all going to go. Don't that sound wonderful? It could be a matter of the coordinated removal that God's got going here is because of health issues. Pastors who have to, to, to step down because their health just isn't good enough anymore. It doesn't mean they've gone into retirement. They, they still study. they still uh, preparing themselves to be able to preach whenever they get the opportunity to. I remember uh, a few years back there over at First Baptist in New Chicago, Brother Bill Barrow. 
and they were looking for a pastor, and uh, he was needing to retire. His health just would not let him continue. But he was there every single time those doors were open until he finally passed. He'd gone into something of a retirement, pastor emeritus, if you will, but he was still active. It just health brought him down. And, of course, that leads to the, the, the outright passing away. It could be a matter of that uh, the plans God had for you, they're done, and it's time for you to move on to your reward. God didn't promise us that we'd all live to be 100 years old. Some people may have been born just simply for the sake of having an hour's worth of life, 10 years' worth of life, 20 years' worth of life. And God gets the glory from it. Of course, there is also the deliberate destruction of the windmill. Uh, as, as I was researching, I found an instance where the owners deliberately allowed the windmill to just explode. Literally spin itself to, to pieces because it would be cheaper to pick up the broken pieces than it would be to go in there and just tear it down. How sad is that, church? We're getting back over into that 1 Corinthians chapter number 5 business again. Where a, a human being has gotten themselves so wrapped up in sin. God's spirit is being so swarmed by sin. That God the Father finally says, alright, that's it. You're out of there. If you won't change your ways, fine. I'm going to set my spirit free and I'm going to take your soul and move it on over into paradise. It's happened, church. It happens far too often. But it happens. But from there, we're going to move on to some nicer stuff, I suppose you could say. Because sometimes it simply could be a matter of the windmill stop turning because it's not catching the wind. Now, the wind isn't blowing where the blades of that rotor are located, where they can catch the wind and scoop it. The windmill is misaligned for where that wind is blowing. I, I can't help but think about that uh, windmill farm there on I-65. I, I, sorry, uh, it's the only one I, I know of that's close to me, uh, so I'm just going to keep bringing that one up. But as I, I drive down 65 in the daylight, uh, you, you see the windmills, and you see some turning, some are not. You, you see some are facing this way, some are facing this way, some, you know, little angle over there and whatnot there. Uh, some are turning, and the one right next to them ain't doing nothing. But they're both facing the same way. It's because one of them is lined with how the wind's going, so it's turning. And the other one ain't lined up. Now maybe it just needs to be turned a little bit and it'll start catching the wind and it'll start turning as well. It might be a matter of the wind has shifted so as that when both of these were turning, yeah, I know, you know, not doing it right here, do it this way for those of you on camera. Uh, the wind turns and now all of a sudden it's only catching the one windmill and not the second windmill. could be a matter that there's no breeze at all. Of course, there's also the possibility that uh, what they've done is they've turned the windmill so as it's not going to catch the, the breeze at the moment. And they've got reasons for doing all that sort of stuff there. We'll get in that in a moment here. But the fact of the matter remains that Christians... As individuals, as a, a local assembly, <clears throat> as families, we need to be turned into the wind following what the Holy Spirit would have us to do. He leads us. He guides us. He's going to bring us into all truth. We need to be obedient to him we need to be listening to him we need to be watching the direction he leads us so that we can be properly aligned so we can catch the wind now i understand there are times when god says 
be still and know that I am God. Sometimes it's a matter of that the, uh, you know, we, we look for answers and we get uh, yes, no, and, and slow. Yes, go to it. No, don't bother. And slow. You need to wait a moment. Maybe God's got to line something up. And, and maybe if we try turning into the wind, maybe we catch a little bit and get a little bit of movement there. But in the process of turning to try to catch what little bit we can, we end up missing the bigger gust of wind that was coming for us. Trying desperately to get anything and everything. We're reaching out blindly because you don't see the wind, church. <laughs> you ever notice that? You can't see the wind. You could see the, the effects. See the, the leaves shaking in the wind. See that garbage rolling down the street there because you know someone didn't close their uh, garbage lids all the way. See that, that, that plastic bag from the local grocery store flying away. We can hear it. You might even be able to hear some of the, the wind that's blowing now as I'm preaching. But you can't see the wind. As we hear it, we're hearing its effects. As we see the, the stuff being blown around, we see the effects. We don't get to actually see the wind. Now, why am I saying all this? Because I can't see the Holy Spirit. I've got to see his effects. I've got to look for the direction the wind is blowing here. You look at the flagpole and the flag's going this way. Okay, I'm looking at my Bible. I'm looking at the flag of the Word of God. What is the direction the Lord would have me to go? I've got the wind sock of prayer out there so that I can find what the Lord would have me to do so I can operate in the proper faith and not on speculation. And sometimes he says, all right, Dennis, now I just need you to slow your roll for a moment because I got something better coming for you. I don't need you to catch the wind at the moment, Dennis. I need you to let me bring the wind to you. Which leads me to my last point here this morning. The controlled downtime. See, windmills need a lot of maintenance. You've got a lot of moving parts. You've got bearings and, and, and axles and, and gears and grease and all this stuff. That you've got to properly take care of them or they will fly apart. They will experience that catastrophic failure. They will begin to start to corrode. They'll collapse. They'll fail. They'll stop catching the wind if we don't take and give some controlled downtime, repairs need to be made. Maintenance has got to be done. Like as I said earlier, sometimes the wind is just too strong, so that what they will do is they will take and apply those brakes to protect the windmill from destroying itself. Ever get in one of those meetings there? Where the Holy Spirit is moving. People are shouting all over the place. People going to the altars there. They're getting help from the master. The, 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 maybe it's, it's so powerful. Maybe it's so on like Donkey Kong there. That the preacher ain't even got up to preach yet. The, we're still in the singing portion of it. And everything's just going so strong. And you're feeling so overwhelmed by it. I can't shout. I can't. I can't even raise my arms right now. Because it's just so thick in here. With the Holy Spirit. It's been a long time since I've been in one of those services. But I like some. See, that's a little controlled downtime. What is it? It's God working on me. Restoring. Excuse me. Restoring me. It's him saying, Dennis, just sit there and take it in, son. 
people are getting what they need right now and what you need right now is just to sit there and enjoy the ride. That's something special. Yeah. Yeah, those wind speeds too strong at the moment, spiritually speaking. What you need to do is just sit there and take it in. Sometimes you can control that downtime simply because it's a matter of God needs to work on you. And he understands you need to rest. Mark chapter 6, verse number 30 and 31. Jesus had sent the apostles out. Uh, they'd done their preaching. They, they did perform their miracles. They returned to them at the, the set time. And it says here in Mark 6, 30 and 31, And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Watch us now. Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. Then it goes on to say, For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. Sometimes it's just simply a matter we've been going all out, all out, all out, all out. And God's saying, all right, you need to come apart before you come apart. I wonder how many evangelists out there right now, they've had all these meetings canceled over the past few months because of COVID. And for them, it's not a matter of God is testing their faith so much as it's a matter of God saying, Look, you've been on the road 300 days out of the year. You need to slow down. You need to have some controlled downtime before you burn yourself out. How many uh, churches? It's a matter of, look, you've been, you've been on fire for me. I just need you to slow down a little bit here because I don't need to burn anybody out doing this. See, God understands that we are fallible human beings. He understands that, that we are not all powerful, that we are, we are not strong all the time. He understands that we have our weak spots. He understands that we have our failures. He understands that sometimes we just need to sit down and get a little rest. And not just at nighttime while we're asleep either. But for our own benefit, just take some time off now obviously you take some time off uh, that means that you're going to get back on the clock <laughs> those windmills don't stay offline once they've been taken down for a little bit of maintenance they get back up start turning again Windmill stops for various reasons, but it is designed to go all the time. I've got just two questions and a statement here for you. Oh, by the way, the windmill is also supposed to operate at 40% of its capacity. Anything more than that? Okay, a little extra profit there. Anything less than that, now it's operating at a loss. So my questions are this, are we operating for God or for ourselves? Number two, very important question here is, are we operating at all? A lot of Christians got saved and they got their feelings hurt and they walked away from God and that's it. They're not even taking care of themselves, they're just waiting for eternity. You know someone like that, pray for them. My statement is this. Let's turn into the wind and see the change that God can bring to us. Our most gracious Father in heaven, we do thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. We do pray, Lord, for your blessings upon this day. Help us, please, Father, to be obedient to you, to follow your holy will, to, to be the windmills that you'd have for us to be, to produce for you as you want, to get those results that we should be doing. Thank you, God, for loving us and saving us. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Go ahead and turn to our...
closing song here this morning. <clears throat> A little bit of water real quick. Jesus' blood washed away all my sin. Will you accept this price and let him in? Into your heart, into your life. He will help and guide you through strife. He'll give you peace and everything. Oh, what joy this peace will bring. Accept the sacrifice from him, and you'll find great peace within. Do you accept the trials from God, the way that you accept the good? He sends the troubles down to you, for his grace will carry you through. He'll give you peace in everything. Oh, what joy this peace will bring. Accept the sacrifice from him. And you'll find great peace within. He gives us trials and troubles to show he can handle the squabbles. When troubles and trials are over, you'll see all his blood will cover. He'll give you peace in everything. Oh, what joy this peace will bring. Accept the sacrifice from him and you'll find great peace within. Amen, amen. We thank you for your attention today. And may the good Lord go with you through the week. Our most gracious Father in heaven, we do thank you, God, for loving us and saving us. Pray, Lord, for your blessings upon this day and for all those who've tuned in. And help us all, please, to be producing the way that you'd have for us to do. We thank you, God, for loving us and saving us. We do ask you, Father, for all the prayer requests that you'd please would take care of them according to your holy will. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. He'll give you peace and everything. Oh, what joy this peace.